NBA officials are full-time and you're constantly complaining about them. Major League umpires are full-time and you're constantly complaining about them. Full-time doesn't guarantee perfect officiating. You're constantly complaining that stars get the call in the NBA. Those guys make $300,000 a year and they're full-time. We rarely get caught up in NFL officiating. This was the rare instance, a missed call. As I've said for years, late in games, refs swallow whistles. Be advised. If you remember that Rams-Saints game, the Rams' defensive backs were so hyper-aggressive in the second half because they were coached up because that's what happens in the NFL. Get aggressive late, refs swallow whistles. Be that as it may, are the Saints absolutely sure that a rule change that calls more pass interference is good? Because what is the weakness of the New Orleans Saints? Their corners. Late in games, less talented players often have to grab, pull, hold to stay close to better players. I would argue in one year, unless the Saints nail the draft in corners, their weakness will again be corners. And their corners have to grab a little more and reach a little more and pull a little more to stay with elite receivers on their schedule. Secondly, uh, the Saints were the last team to benefit from the sudden death overtime in 2009. They got the benefit of an overtime. I, every year I pick two teams in the NFL. Every year I pick two teams that I call them pullback teams. Teams that like made the playoffs and they won't. And by the way, statistically, this is the way it works in the NFL more than any sport. Last becomes first, playoffs become duds, Super Bowl loser becomes loser, period. Last year, you remember the teams I picked? Jacksonville was in the AFC Championship. I said they're too loud, too cocky, too emotional, they'll pull back. They were awful. Minnesota got to the NFC Championship. I said series of breaks, abnormally healthy, change quarterbacks, coordinators, they'll pull back. They did. It's 2-0 last year. I could go back four years. I'm basically perfect on this one thing I predict, the two pullback teams. Saints are going to be a pullback team. Back-to-back -back years, overly emotional, endings to season. Drew Brees, at the end of last year, I thought physically didn't look the same. They don't really throw the ball down the field. You lose a Mark Ingram. You got a guy retire on your offensive line. I think this team is so caught up, the city, the team, the organization, on this blown call, it will affect them going into next year. Don't give me full-time refs solve everything. They don't. If they did, you'd never complain about an umpire, a soccer ref, a hockey ref, or an NBA official. All right. I want to talk about the Raiders. So... We've kind of looked at the Raiders and mostly said, they're kind of making it up as they go. We don't know that for sure. We don't know it for sure, but it kind of feels like it. And John Gruden's a great talker. He and Mike Tomlin are the best coaches in the NFL at the podium. Tomlin could be a TV star, no question. Gruden was a TV star. So John's good at talking. My theory is, as much as I look at the Raiders as sort of making it up as they go, they have acquired Antonio Brown, Trent Brown, and Terrell Williams, and Vontez Perfect. All can play. They have more talent today. More talent today than they did last year. By the way, they have four of the thir first 35 picks. I went to several mock drafts this morning. And this is what I believe is the greatest prediction of what they will draft. Keenan Williams with a fourth pick. I've been told by two NFL GMs, the Alabama defensive lineman is the best player in the draft. The Jets will pass on him, go for an edge rusher, which they need more. Their first pick will be the best player in the draft. Their second pick will be Josh Jacobs, told by an NFL general manager last week, he's the best running back in the draft from Bama. The most talented wide receiver in the draft, arguably Marquise Brown, Cousins with Antonio Brown goes 27th, according to a mock draft. And then they get a safety, which they need from Delaware second round. If you combine those with Antonio Brown, Trent Brown, Terrell Williams, Vontez Perfect, Raiders got, Raiders got players. Raiders got a lot of players. My knock on Gruden, Gruden 
talks every time he steps in front of a microphone, talks too much, but he's never said the one thing that would validate that he actually has a plan and isn't making it up. When he traded Khalil Mack, we're all like, you're out of your gourd. But the Raiders just won the Sloan MIT Award for the best analytic move of the NFL season. They got two first-round picks. Bill Belichick gave up Chandler Jones. Chandler led the NFL in sacks next year. They got a second-round pick and a guard they cut. So what I'm going to do is what I rarely do because I'm awful at it, but the next three minutes, I'm going to do a John Gruden impersonation. And this is what I wish John Gruden. Oh, wait. Hold on one second, Joy. Hold on. This is not great. It's not going well initially. I'm putting on a visor. Okay. There you go. So first of all, he says the Raiders a lot. The Raiders. He moves his head a lot. That's what he does. Let's have some press conference sound, John. Hey, Chucky. Time uh, out. Stop. What? That's disrespectful. Okay. <laughs> Nobody at a press conference yells, hey, Chucky. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Let's Just make this professional. Start. <laughs> all right. So first of all, hey. Coach Gruden. Uh, why did you trade Khalil Mack to the Bears? Listen, I love Khalil Mack. Okay? Guy's unbelievable. Khalil Mack's a once-in-a-lifetime talent, okay? But at $23 million, that's a once-in-a-lifetime contract. And I believe if you look at the history of this league last 20 years, you can pay your quarterback that. At the Raiders, we're about building a culture. We've got a lot of mouse to feed here, Okay? Okay, this is the best defensive draft in the last 25 years. We got four elite pass rushers in this draft. Okay, get nine top defensive tackles. Okay, we looked at the Saber metrics and the analytics here. Okay, I love Khalil Mack, but I got the best defensive draft in 20 years. I got a lot of mouths to feed the Raiders. Okay, you look at the history of 23 million dollars for defensive players. You don't win Super Bowls. Okay, and the Raiders, okay, the Raiders here, we're into winning Super Bowls, okay? Any more questions? Is that the first time you've used the word sabermetrics before? I don't know what the hell I was talking about there. <laughs> kind of missed on that one, okay? That's the bottom line. So my point is... I thought that was very good, actually. Here's my point. That was not as horrible as yeah, I, I was hoped expecting it would be. Yeah, I was much worse. Here's the thing. You can make an analytic argument that in the best defensive draft in 20 years, he's got four of the top 35 picks. They've upgraded at wide receiver substantially. That it made sense not to pay a defensive end $23 million. That's what you pay quarterbacks to. That's not really Gruden's style to come out and do what you just did, though. He never shuts up at a press conference. He says he's the most glib guy ever. Could he not just say, if he said, you know, if he said that, Joey, here's what I would do. Okay, he's got a plan. I got nothing to say. He's got a plan. If Chris Ballard said that, Howie Roseman, Bill Belichick, Sean McVay, all he has to say is, it's the best defensive draft in 20 years. We got 12 guys who are game changers. And I don't feel like paying a guy $23 million. Okay, let me go back to Gruden one more second. Just one more, John. One more quick so I can put the thing on. Okay, here's the thing. Hey. Okay, listen. At the Raiders, you don't think we want to win? You think I'm not trying to win here? We got a salary cap. This isn't baseball. That's why I said sabermetrics. I got lost for a second. The bottom line, we got salary cap here, okay? Okay, you can't pay J.J. Watt everything, okay? Got to get your quarterback to Sean Watson. Got to pay him everything, okay? Derek Carr's been in this league now, all right? All right, with the Raiders for like seven years. I'm not getting him on a discount now. He's not, a, not on a rookie contract now, okay? You get that? Derek Carr's not in a rookie contract. We're not talking about Dak here, okay? I'm not talking about Dak. I'm not talking about Goff here. We're talking about, I got, I got a veteran quarterback. Got to pay him $27 million a year. You get that? Okay, baby. Antonio Brown, passing league. Got to pay him $27 million. I can't do, I can't have three guys making all my money. Okay, got it? And I'm done with that. That's stupid. No, it's, it still wasn't bad. <laughs> I, no. I didn't have a problem with the Khalil Mack trade. I think it just was very dramatic because it was the first thing that he did, and it's a big move, and Khalil Mack's a big name, their biggest name. 
don't think he just went in like, no, oh, let's get rid of Khalil Mack. I happens. think I think Gruden had a plan. All he has to do to to shut everybody up is say, I have a plan. Two, three things. Because he talks constantly. Just come out and just say, hey, boom, boom, boom. Derek Carr's not on a rookie contract. I can't pay Khalil Mack 23, Derek 28. I'm out of money. That's all you got to say. Great draft. I mean, all of it makes sense. And I'd be like, yeah, you got me on that one. I can't, I can't do anything. I'm not going to do any more press conferences for a while. I'm going to retire officially okay. my press conference. Are con- you emotionally exhausted from that acting First of all, Goulet almost ruined it. With it. Gru- Goulet came out there, hey, Chucky. <laughs> oh, I'm, bl- I'm sorry I didn't take this more seriously. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.